Hey, it's Jeff Gibbons here, and this is going to be a video on how to shoot macro photography on a budget with extension tubes. So what I've got here is a Canon 5D Mark III. It's getting kind of old now, um, but you could use any DSLR and any flash. I'm using a Canon flash on top, and I am using the amazing $150 Canon 50 millimeter plastic fantastic nifty 50 whatever you want to call it so the cheapest lens that I could use on here I think and then I've got these Kenco extension tubes that I picked up a long time ago so I've had these probably about six years now and you can still get them get them at B&H uh, for about $130 US and they just attach right onto the camera and they give you three different distances. So you've got a, a, th a thick one, and this one is 36 millimeter extension. We've got an, the next size down, 12 millimeter and a 20 millimeter. And you can stack them together, and the more you have them together, the farther the lens gets away from the body of the camera. And the farther the lens is away from the camera or from the sensor, the closer you can get your camera to the things that you're taking pictures of. And so when you use these extension tubes, you have a very minimal focusing distance. So it's right in front of the lens. You couldn't put these on and go shoot some headshots. And so the difference between extension tubes and a macro lens, a real macro lens, is that you can't use these for other kinds of photography. So if you were to buy a nice Canon macro lens, you would be able to shoot other things with it, and then you'd be able to shoot macro nice and close. But with these extension tubes, you're very limited, just get up nice and close, and that's it. I'm also using this flash bender up top, and this thing I got a while ago as well, and it just lets me shape where the flash is reflecting. And so instead of using the flash directly on the things I'm taking pictures of, I kind of use the flash bender to, um, to manipulate the light as it's coming out of the flash. When you are shooting with the extension tubes, if you hold the shutter button down halfway, it'll give you a preview of what you're seeing. So what that allows you to do is it allows you to move closer or farther away from the thing that you're taking a picture of and see where your focus is. And then as soon as you've got your focus, you snap the picture. So that's how I've been shooting all of my macro shots. It makes things a lot easier than trying to get up close to the camera. So why am I using a flash and not just taking pictures with ambient light? It's because you need a lot of light to take these pictures. So when I'm shooting, I found myself shooting somewhere around uh, F, anywhere past F10 or 11, all the way up to F18. And that's because our depth of field is so shallow when you're using these extension tubes, you want to try and get that, that depth of field deeper by using a lot more light. So I went and shot a whole bunch of photos earlier today, and I will show you some clips of that. And then I'm going to get into editing the photos and, uh, and then processing them, having some fun with them. So I've just gone around the house and picked up some of my favorite antiques. We have a bunch of old cameras and radios, just assembled them on our white table here. I've also got some things with color on it, like this globe, and all I'm gonna use those for is just to add a little bit of color in the background. I've got this orange glass snifter just to cast some color onto the camera from the flash. So I think it's gonna look really neat if I get it just right. As soon as I got a focus spot that I'm happy with, I just take the photo. These are flash bulbs and inside it are material that's very reflective and so when you light it up with a flash and get really close this looks amazing and then i'll try a little bit wider with this guy as well just trying to get a bit of the blue in the background while I get this cactus in the front. So don't have to shoot just antiques. I like shooting anything, anything that's got a neat texture to it. And this little cactus here is really cool. Even the dirt can be magical if you uh, have enough light on it and get close enough. Look at that. This one's pretty steampunk. It's got 
some really neat metal inside it. Ah, that's cool. So here you can see my editing process sped up. For post-processing, I use Lightroom and a program called On One Effects. Lightroom helps me sort the images and remove the dust or other gunk I don't want in the photo. I had a fiber on the sensor that was causing a problem, so I had to take that out afterwards. After I've removed any of the things I don't want in the photo, I go to On One Effects and do all sorts of other things to the photos. Really, this is just kind of like the Instagram filters on steroids. Fun way to play with the photos. You can also add textures to your photos, and I do like adding textures. Sometimes it does really neat stuff to areas that are just kind of flat and out of focus. Anyways, there is just a ton of stuff that you can do in On One Effects to make the photos look more interesting, and the software itself uh, isn't super expensive, so it's a neat way to, to add some really interesting textures and colors and glows and vignettes and borders to your photos. If you go to gibbonscreative.ca, you'll see the other things that I am up to. I'm also a composer and a producer, a music producer, and a videographer. So go check it out and thanks for watching.